A diamond is a rock. It's coming out of the ground. It's being cut. You have to understand the diamond to be able to bring the beauty out of it. Veteran diamond trader Fischl Bagel has been dealing diamonds since the 1970s. Back then, you looked at a diamond, you looked at the weight of the diamond, you looked at the color, you looked at the clarity, you looked at the cut. These are the basics of diamond classification, the four C's. And you made up your mind, you said, this is worth $1,500 a carat. Based on what? Based on what I bought last week. What was last week's based on? The week before. There's no, like, sitting down and saying, OK, this is the price. But it had to be set at some point. It was not set. There was no In the beginning thing. of time? There was no such thing. So it was what you could get. I would ask for a price. They would make an offer. And we go back and, and forth. I go back and forth till a deal was made. Today, Fischl deals mostly in brand name vintage jewelry. OK, so if I was bringing this in. Yes. Take my loop out, take a look, and say, oh, this is What is this called? A loop. L-O-U-P-E. OK. It's a magnifying glass. OK. Well, um, usually when I see people do that, can I tell you what I think to myself? Yeah. They're totally full of Some of them are. OK. The main thing is trust. What would be the likelihood of the disparity that I would get if I saw four different people with the same rate? If you saw four honest people, the disparity would be probably 10 to 15 percent. When I negotiated with Reuven for that diamond bracelet, I was able to get the price down by 13 percent, right in that 10 to 15 percent range. I'm now starting to get a glimpse into how this whole business works. So what is your offer on that ring? $65,000. How do I know if I'm getting a good deal? You're never going to know. There's I, no such thing as knowing, 100%. I know, but you I want to know. trust me. It's built on trust. It's built on who I am, built on my reputation. And your culture? And my culture. You have to trust me. But Fisher, I want to understand the history a little bit, because I'm fascinated by this whole concept and the history of how it all came to be. There are a lot of orthodox Jews in this business. The deep history, I think, starts way, way back in the olden days. We're talking about Poland and Russia, there were a lot of pogroms, and Jews were persecuted a lot. I think that diamonds were something you could put in your pocket and move with it. If you had to run, and your business was diamonds, you're taking it along with you. Be here today, be there tomorrow, you're in business. The Jewish community that left Russia and Poland first went to Amsterdam and Antwerp, and then during the Second World War, came to the United States. They set up diamond businesses in Lower Manhattan on the Bowery, before settling on 47th Street in the 1930s. 